Fiber reinforced polymer structures have been used in construction industry for last two, three decades. The benefits of FRP or fiber reinforced polymer structures is that they are fast to erect, they are durable and corrosion resistant. What is FRP? FRP is a material where you have glass or carbon fibers embedded in resin matrix, where fibers resemble human hair and resin is like a glue. Together, it forms a composite material that is as strong as steel. But the benefit is that it is three to four times lighter than steel. In today's presentation, I'm going to talk about beam to column joints in FRP structures. This is part of my conference presentation in Rome, Italy, when I was working at the University of Warwick. And I would like to share my experience and research with you. This is how my today's presentation is organized. First background, test configuration, then test results, and finally conclusions. Standard FRP shapes, they resemble steel structures, but they are far more lighter than steel, at least three times lighter than steel. But the design in FRP structures is controlled by displacements or deflections, not strength. In steel structures, you will almost certainly all the time design for strength. It means that how the material is uh, strong. GFRP eye catcher building in Switzerland and it has been used in railway platforms as well quite a lot again due to fast deployability of this material and it's been used in bridges as well it's been very popular especially in Netherlands in FRP footbridges. This slide shows test configuration the depth is 1094 millimeter and from the center line of the column to the loading point it is 1016 millimeter now you would argue that why is it 1016 why not one meter it is due to a location of loading points between the column and uh, the beam five tests were conducted they were repeated and in total on left and right side we had 10 joints and the bottom of the column was a rocker base it means that it was a pin support and the tension jacks had pin support as well at the end and we pulled beams downwards so that load can be applied this is a test configuration and you can see tension jacks web cleats were used to connect beams to columns and we used manual hydraulic jacks to pull the specimens this is the detail of frp connection wide flange sections 254 by 254 by 9.53 sections were used for both beams and columns. Remember that last dimension is the thickness of the flange or web. And web cleats, leg angles, they were used to connect beams with columns. The column side has a clearance hole of about 1.6 to 2 millimeter, but the beam side did not have any clearance hole at all because we wanted to see that how does it perform in serviceability. And that was the reason that uh, bolt holes, they had tight fix uh, diameter. So 16 millimeter diameter and M16 grade 8.8 .8 bolts were uh, used. Although we use a diameter of 16 millimeter, but when we got the bolts from market, they had a diameter from uh, 15.6 or 7 to 15.9. So there was some kind of a slip that we call as extra slip or additional slip and we compensated for uh, that slip because uh, we wanted to see the actual behavior, moment rotation behavior of these joints. Now you would argue that in real life you will always have a clearance hole uh, on beam side for ease in fabrication but we wanted to see that although it has beneficial effect on uh, rotations at serviceability but it cannot be relied upon and the reason is that you never know that where bolt is going to be located within the uh, bolt hole so that's the reason we compensated for that slip to see the actual behavior during service life of the uh, structure 
And again, there was a gap between the end of the beam and the column. The reason for this gap is that these joints were simple. Simple joints would allow rotations and fixed joints will not allow rotations. This is the instrumentation that we used on the left side, LTL, LBL. These are displacement transducers on the right side, LTR, LBR. These are displacement transducers as well. The purpose of these displacement transducers was to see how the beam side is rotating and what kind of additional slip is being developed due to very small clearance uh, hole. And that we compensated for when we were plotting moment rotation curves. C1 is the inclinometer on the left side to measure rotation. C2 is inclinometer, which was located at the center of the column, which measured rotation of the column. And C3 measured the rotation of left beam. This brings me to failure modes I took pictures and then combined them into a slide. Then you will see that when we pull these joints down, how does it fail? There are white pages at the back and you can see these lines there. Left side has more rotation as compared to right side. Now this might be due to slip rotation happening on the beam side, but we compensated for that slip rotation uh, so that you can see the actual behavior of these joints. These are failure modes. On top side, you can see the uh, joints left side indicates damage onset it means that where hairline cracks appeared on top of frp cleats and the bottom left side you can see the top view from the beam side and cleats they had hairline cracks and we had a professional photographer who, who took these pictures so that uh, you can see the pictures really very clearly and on the right side it is at the failure point where we stop the loading and uh, now you can see that the cracks are really visible on cleat side it means that the failure happened in frp cleats now the key point here is to see that where is this hairline crack appearing and when it appears we call it as serviceability limit this is the close-up of failure uh, modes. At damage onset on the left side, see that there are hairline cracks which are appearing at the heel of lag angle. So at the junction where two parts are meeting. And on the right side, you can see after failure, the cracks are now really visible. And this indicates that now the joint has failed. These are moment rotation plots and on the left side for one of the plots uh, you can see left and right side and uh, moment is plotted versus joint rotation. Black dot indicates damage onset. It means that where these hairline cracks appeared on top of the web cleats. Left and right side joint is a bit different. The stiffness is different and the reason is due to this small clearance hole. Although we had tight fitting bolts, but the actual diameter of the bolt that came from market was 15.7 to 15.9. So it allowed small rotation. And when we compensated for that rotation, you can see on the right side that the graphs, they nearly match to each other. That means that joints are behaving pretty much in the same way, either from left or from right side. Then we classified the joints as per Eurocode 3. Tests which are under this solid line, they are pin joints and between pin and rigid limit, you have semi-rigid and beyond rigid, you will have rigid joints. Rigid joints means that they will be fixed completely an entire moment or a significant chunk of moment will be transferred from the member to the joint. And here, all joints were classified as pinned or simple joints. You can see all these black dots, they appear under Eurocode 3 pin joint uh, limit. Now, this is really very important 
slide where we check the serviceability of these uh, joints. We have to ensure that these joints perform well in their service lives without any uh, cracking. The dashed line that you can see is creative protrusions uh, limit of span over 250 and the solid line that you can see is euro code zero limit of span over 360 that is the most common one and it met the limit from euro code zero which is a very common limit whenever you are designing a beam a steel beam you would say that deflection limit is a span over 360 so these joints they met this deflection limit and in reality when we took the average it wasn't very far off it was span over 345 or 350 something but it is safe to say that span over 360 limit is quite fine for designing these beams because the design of frp members is controlled by deflections using right deflection limit is absolutely critical this brings me to conclusions and the major conclusion from this research is that the joints they met the serviceability limit state in euro quotes which is span over 360 and that is absolutely critical because these joints are controlled by deflections or serviceability limits strength is normally fine they're equally strong as a steel but they are lighter so they will deflect more so design normally is controlled by deflections and it met the deflection criteria but the fact that the cracks will appear at the cleats there are chances that water can ingress these joints are constructed mainly in chemically corrosive environment or food processing plants even that kind of hairline cracks cannot be tolerated the rotation slip cannot be relied upon because it might not happen so that's the reason we compensated for slip all joints they fail due to excessive delamination cracking on top of the web cleats all joints here they were classified as nominally pinned as per euro code 3. i would like to acknowledge my colleagues who helped in preparation of uh, this presentation you can download the copy of published paper at this tinyurl.com slash jq dash cice 2012 or you can scan this barcode to get access to paper immediately thanks for watching this presentation with me today uh, i hope you enjoyed the presentation if you have any questions just put them down in the comments and i will see you in my next presentation thank you And the main driver for using these FRP materials is corrosion, resistance, and lightweight. FRP composites in civil engineering are mainly used in three applications. FRP profiles for new build structures, FRP reinforcing bars, FRP in repair and re 